Alignment. Yes, I'm going there. I'm Melinda Gandeldor, and this is Mage's Musings. game of Dungeons and Dragons. When players make their characters, they must choose an indicator of their moral compass. They choose from two major axes. The moral axis consists of goodness, neutrality, and evil. The ethical axis consists of lawfulness, neutrality, and chaos. When creating their character for the game, the player must choose one aspect from each axis to form their overall moral and ethical compass. We refer to this in the game as alignment. There are nine possible combinations, each with a different worldview where morals and ethics are concerned. It's a contentious issue in D&D circles, one that has caused many arguments in the several decades since the inception of Dungeons & Dragons. That's because when dealing with philosophical concepts like these, people's personal beliefs tend to be both varied and ingrained. If you ask a dozen different people what good means, you'll very well get a dozen different answers and spark endless debate. Another problem that comes up is that most people will infuse our modern mores into the system without considering that people in a medieval fantasy world will have far different points of view. Many modern players eschew alignment entirely, and certainly The system has been diminished in recent editions, which I feel is a shame, because as a system, it's actually quite valuable. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, you must remember that we are playing a game, and games have rules and parameters. These rules and parameters aren't always a perfect reflection of real life. For instance, have you ever been critically injured, then completely recovered after one night of bed rest? Hmm? Another complaint I've often heard about alignment is that it feels too constraining, like a straitjacket. Oh, well, sorry that choosing to be ethical and moral means you can't go around robbing and murdering people at will. So horrible. That's sarcasm, by the way. But seriously, there's the first problem. Perspective. Viewing the alignment as a straitjacket. Straitjackets are restrictive and uncomfortable, something you always try to get out of. How many instances have you seen of players trying to justify actions that fall out of the realm of their chosen alignment, rather than just play the alignment? I prefer to view alignment as a tool. A tool is an item with a specific purpose, and the more you use it, the more it becomes second nature to you, an extension of you. Alignment is not the be-all and end-all of your character. It is simply their moral and ethical compass, one filter through which you consider your choices. At your table, in your campaign, there is one key person whose perspective on alignment will set the parameters. The Dungeon Master. It is incumbent on the DM to clearly lay out how they perceive alignments and how they are applied to the game world. Listen to your DM when they tell you how they interpret the alignments. That's your metric for how to apply them. You don't have to agree with it. You just have to accept that that's how they'll be run. It's no different than accepting a house rule you don't fully agree with. In that world, that's what the morality is. As a role-playing tool, alignments are brilliant. They give you a guide for how you can step out of yourself and play a character with a different perspective. When you start thinking about the morality of your choices through the filter of the alignment you've selected, you'll find the character choices become interesting and dynamic, especially when they veer away from your own normal patterns of thought. It's a great acting tool, if you let go of your preconceived notions and just run with it. Players will often complain when their chosen alignment interferes with what they want to accomplish. I can't do that because that's against my stupid alignment. That's a common complaint at tables. You can tell the player's in avatar mode and not inhabiting the role. Whereas if you inhabit the role and separate your own personal desires from the point of view of the character, then you'll find these so-called limitations are actually... Opportunity for roleplay. Hmm. Tool, not straitjacket. Just remember, it's okay if you occasionally fall out of the parameters of your alignment in a moment of tension or when presented with a dilemma. People are not perfect. That includes characters in a fictional RPG world. 
Moreover, situations you find yourself in will challenge your perspective because they won't always be compatible with your worldview. This will make your experience more nuanced. Always strive to honor the parameters of your moral compass, and if you violate the tenets of your beliefs, ask yourself how that would affect the character personally. Make it into story by letting it guide subsequent actions. Does the good and honorable person who violates their code continue a descent into depravity? Or double down on their honor and redeem their actions? Does an evil, self-serving character who acts in a genuinely selfless way, at great cost to themselves, find a path to enlightenment? Or do they go extra dark to compensate? People love to use examples from literature or film to personify the alignments. It can be useful, and I certainly do it myself from time to time, but it's important to remember that while elements of the characters may certainly exemplify the alignment you've assigned to them, these characters were not created or written from the parameters of the D&D alignment system, so they won't fit the mold perfectly. Right now, I'm just doing an overview, keeping it simple and general. Starting with Part 2, I shall take a deeper dive into interpreting the alignments, or more accurately, how I like to present them at my tables. I wish to stress that I'm not telling you how you should do it, rather demonstrating the conclusions I've come to over decades of play. Hopefully, it will offer you a new point of view and help you with your own game. So, I will conclude this video here. Please stay tuned for Part 2 of my exploration of alignment, where I will break down the moral axis and explore the concepts of good and evil. Mm. I shall see you anon, my friends. <laughs>